looking in the account at a glance, this uh, collection case ID that you gave me doesn't doesn't match your account at all. And in fact, we're showing that you have no balance. So the mailing address that we have on file is PO Box 842, uh, Berwick, Maine. Is that the correct address? No, I've never lived in Maine. I've actually I've been to Maine once in my life. What? Oh, I apologize. I, okay, actually, this is. This could explain everything because one of the things I've been going over with the other reps is I never got any of the notices saying that I owed tax. Because like if I had gotten a notice saying, hey, you owe fifteen hundred dollars, we're going to take you to court, like I would have paid that immediately. That's less than one than like my manager one week of my employee salary. Um, so have all these notices been going to Maine this whole time? I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just curious. No, yeah, no. Let me take a look at... All right, everybody. I'll just be honest with you. I don't know whether or not I should spoil it at the beginning because this is a really, really long thing. And the the the, uh, the punchline is so ridiculous that I'm, I just think it should be shared in the beginning or whether I should not spoil it. So I'm going to include timestamps if you want to skip around the spoilers. So here's the spoiler. A, this was a clerical error the entire time. I owe them no money. B, the reason that I was never notified of this is because the address that they had on file was not the address that I provided for my business. It wasn't my business filing address or my store. It was, I shit you not, a P.O. box in Maine. So they were sending these notices saying, hey, you owe this money. Hey, you owe this money. Hey, we're going to take you to court. Hey, we're going to get a lien on you. Hey, we got a lien on you. Hey, do you want to pay the lien? All those notices were going to literally a P.O. box in Maine. And here's the effed up part. Here's the effed up part about all of this shit and what drives me nuts. At some point, you actually start to think that maybe, just maybe, it's you. There is a Reddit thread where the, the top upvoted post right now, 53 upvotes, says, what a whiff on this. Seems like a smart guy. Could have looked it up. And somebody says, no, he did. You know, he didn't pay his taxes or he failed to report to the proper authority and they kept billing him. This is entirely on him. Here's the thing. At some point, you actually start to believe that it's you. Like, I have binders here. I have binders, not binders full of women. I'm not Rit Romney. I have binders for my businesses. You get these when you order a company book from Hubco. And my accountant tells me that every time I send a piece of correspondence to New York State Taxation of Finance or IRS, that I need to include a copy of it in this binder along with a certified mail receipt because he said that they will forget. He says that I treat all of my clients like they are children that are even stupider than the people that work at New York State Department of Finance. And I'll be honest with you, that's the way to do it. It really is. It saves you. So when I had that experience that I went over in this video, where I tried to renew my license, they took my money to renew my license. They never sent me my license, but then they sent me a notice saying if I did not renew my license, my business would be shut down in 14 days. I was really happy that I saved that filing receipt that showed that I paid to renew my license. It came in very handy. The same way that this comes in handy, when the state decides to put a lien on you based on a clerical error and then send out every notification to an address in Maine. Anyway, let's get into the video. So the first thing I decided to do, since they couldn't find anything based on my filing ID, was to call up the county clerk's office, get the filing ID. And let's see how that went. You have reached the offices of the New York County Clerk. While we remain open to the public during this pandemic, please take notice that hours and services may be postponed and or delayed. The pandemic ended over two years ago, my friend. Transactions, e-filings, physical mailings, email and telephone inquiries. All departments except yours will be open to the public on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. and from 2 to 4 p.m. Persons must be physically in the offices, not just the building, by 12.45 p.m. and by 4 p.m. There are approximately 10 persons allowed in the offices at any one time, and only 10 transactions per person are allowed. These protocols are in place due to COVID-19 mandates. We appreciate your cooperation and understanding. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, my name is Lewis. I have a quick question for you. 
So I have okay. a I have a tax lien that's filed against my business, and the creditor is New York State Department of Tax and Finance. However, when I call New York State Department of Tax and Finance, they say that I owe I have no tax due letters, I have no unpaid New York State tax bills, and they can't wow. find this lien. So the two okay. questions I have are how do uh, what is this lien for, and how do I resolve it? Let me get you to the docket department. They handle tax liens. Maybe they can assist with that. Hold on, please. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. No problem. Hold on. Hello? Hi. Yes, the lines are busy. I'm going to give you a direct phone number, okay? Okay. Give me one moment. I'm just going to get a pen and paper. Okay. What's the number, ma'am? 646. 646. 386. 386. 5940. Okay. And if that number is busy, is there any other number to call or way to get in contact with? No, them? that's it. That's the only number. And they don't have like hold. Well, no, you can just call thing? in like about five, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. You have a lovely day. You welcome. You too. Bye. Okay, so how many of you are old enough to be born during a time when nobody had call waiting? Like, if you were on the phone with somebody and somebody else called, you wouldn't see that somebody else was calling and have an opportunity to know who it is. You just got. Doot, 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 doot. That's what they're working with. They do not have call waiting. They don't have hold. Not, like, it's literally one person sitting there answering the phone with a phone that is set up with a busy signal. County clerk. Hi, I have a lien on record, and when I call the creditor of the lien, they can't look, find it. So I was curious uh, how I resolve and pay it, if I can give you the information. Uh, what kind of a lien is it, hon? It's a uh, New York State Department of Taxation and Finance uh, for and corporate you, tax. And you contacted New York State Department of, of Taxation and Finance, and what did they tell you? They said this doesn't exist. They can't find it. And my consolidated statement of tax liability says, according to our records, you do not have any unpaid New York State tax bills at this time. So okay. they suggest that I call my local county clerk. I have right. a filing so, for you. Where are you, you? Where did this come from? Where did you find it? I found it on tax.ny.gov when you search for tax warrants. And also, yeah. well, my, my banker told me, by the way, you should be aware that you have a tax lien on you, just so you know, which I really appreciate. You know, it was very nice of him to like, point yeah. this out to me. Yeah. All right. You said you have a file number. What is that? 003 507 109. New York State Department of Taxation and Finance from 2016? Yes, ma'am. Ruffin also, you're the first person I've gotten to that. Yeah, you're the first person I've gotten to that's been this helpful. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Okay. And I appreciate you. No worries. Um, so it's fifteen hundred fifty-one dollars fifty-two cents, docketed August second, twenty sixteen, against Rossman Repair Group Inc. at one eighty-six First Avenue. That sounds correct. I will give you the warrant ID number, which is New York State uh, identifying number. Okay. They should be able to look up there this tax number and you should be able to make arrangements for payment. Okay. Um, so the, I'm, I'm ready to write it down. Okay. E is in Edward. Uh-huh. 043. Okay. 626. Okay. 203. Okay. 0001. Okay. Okay. So E is an elephant, 043 Correct. And one last question before I let you go and stop wasting your time, I promise. <laughs> no Just out, of sheer, out of sheer curiosity, I, this, I haven't heard about this in seven years. I'm just like kind of curious as to how this whole works. I haven't gotten a phone call, like a letter in the mail, or pretty much anything, because this is a very, 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 very trivial amount of money that I would have given seven years ago if I had any idea that it was actually owed. Do you know how right. this works? So like, would it have, like, would it have been mailed to a like maybe like an old business address or something that, is there well, any other address on file for me? It would have been mailed. No, it, it only would have been mailed to the address that I just gave you, the 186 First Ave. Okay. So I have no explanation for you. If you have an accountant um, and the accountant is, you know, has, has taken care of your taxes all of these years um, uh, and was not aware of this, um, or had been notified about this, you know, you may want to ask those questions because we've seen that happen before. Um, I've also seen where, you know, there may be, um, you know, a tax liability owed uh, and a payment arrangement is made um, and, and New York State will file uh, a money judgment 
regardless of, of whether or not there's a, a payment arrangement. Okay. Yeah, I've talked to my accountant, and he pretty much looks at this every year and sees that there's no tax due letter on the Department of Tax and Finance website. So he was mm-hmm. as, pretty much as surprised by this as me because we, we mainly we have a mail and repair business, so mm-hmm. we we have to check the mail every day because of all the like our entire business is based on like mail and repair. Right. So I just right. curious why this, they would have never sent. You know, them. But yeah, this isn't your fault. No, 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 no. What I'm what I'm saying is is, is that New York State Department of Taxation and Finance um, files these administratively right into our system, so we never get anything on them. We don't know, you know, like I I couldn't even tell you what this was for, um, you know, other than it's showing up as a tax warrant. Um, but with that number, they should be able to tell you what it's for, and they should be able to, you know, um, identify how it was that they filed a money judgment against you administratively because there are certain things that they would have to have done in order to to do this okay well thank you very much for taking the time you i just no thank you for your competence and for your answering all my questions i genuinely appreciate it and i hope you have a great oh, day I, you too thank you so much Bye-bye. armed with the information on the warrant and the lien that starts with the letter e i can now go to the new york state department of taxation and finance which previously was not able to help me in the last video and figure out what's going on in this phone Civil Enforcement, Justine speaking. How can I help you? Hi, I have a question for you about a, a tax warrant. Okay. Uh, so I look, I have a lien on me with a creditor listed as New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Yet when I look up in my account for a consolidated statement of tax liabilities, nothing shows up. So I, ca- I called and I gave them the lien number. And that didn't have any information in the system. But when I called the county clerk's office, they gave me a warrant number, and they said you may be able to look it up using that. Okay. What's the warrant number? E as an elephant. Zero four three six two six two zero three zero 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 one. What is your name? My name is Lewis Rossman. And your address? At the time of the lien or presently? Um, presently. Uh, see that we have, have to abide by, and I can't just change our policy. Yeah, but I mean, policies can always be changed, right? Okay. And what's your phone number? Three four seven five five two 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 five eight. All right. So it looks like did you have a business before? Yes. Yes, I I did. What was the name of it? Rossman Repair Grouping. Okay. So it looks like you had this business and um, didn't file a corporation tax return for period ending twenty twelve. When did you go out of business? Uh, that business existed, I believe, from 2012 through 2022. So it looks like you didn't file the very first return. Okay, so there wasn't a tax return. You're yeah, saying it looks like tax you didn't for file returns for... I'm sorry, go ahead. Did, did you get another business ID number be, be after the temporary ID number? I'll be honest, 2012 is a very long time ago, so I don't remember. Uh, uh, when you say business ID number, do you mean uh, for using the taxitemy.gov website? Yeah, like the TF number that you had. Okay, that I have to ask my CPA about. Um, so that, that's said, what it's from. Um yeah, you, I don't know if you if you went had, ran a business from 2012 to 2022. Do you remember filing returns for that business? Yeah, I remember filing returns every year. That's all. All right, because we have delinquent returns for 12, 13, and 14. 
Okay, so you said the return to delinquent for 2012, 2013, and 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I, if I find those returns... At this point, I was hung up on, and I was honestly just boiling over with rage, so I decided to call the quits and then do the rest of my calls at a later time. And I'll be honest with you, that little bit of doubt that you heard there about 2012, that was the system just grinding me down to the point where I actually believed I was the criminal. Again, I will link to a Reddit thread down below where there are the, the most upvoted post is saying that, gee, you know, this, what a whiff, like, man, I thought this guy was smart, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it sounds like he didn't pay his taxes. And I'll be honest with you, the worst part of this entire process is that after a certain amount of time of being treated like a criminal, you kind of start to think you were one. So I decided to go home and look through all of my books because, as I said, for every single business that I have, every single thing that I file and every single thing that I send them with a certified mail receipt gets kept in a binder. And I found my returns for 2013, 12, 14, and onwards. After those years, I started doing my filings online, but in the early days, I was doing them via paper, and I have every single one. So I called back the next morning to try and figure out what was going on. Good morning, Phil Enforcement. This is Shadi Omerzi. Hi, I have a question about a lien or a tax warrant that I noticed that was on me. Uh-huh. Okay, if I provide you the warrant ID, could I ask you my question after? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, it starts are you, with... Are you going to... One second. Take your time, man. Take your time. Yeah, go, go ahead. Okay, it starts with E as an elephant, mm -hmm. zero four three. Six two six two zero three W as in work zero zero one. Okay, one second, please. Thank you. How's your day going? Thank you. I'm bad. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Great sunny day here. Uh -huh. Very happy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, your name, sir? My name is Lewis Rossman. Okay, the warrant is under your name, or do you have a business? Rossman Repair Group, Inc. So I'm the, I'm the president of the business, and I'm 100% owner of that business. Oh, the president and the owner of the business? Yes, ma'am. And could you please say your name again, please? Louis, uh, L-O-U-I-S, -S, Rossman, R-O-S-S-M-A-N-N. -S -S -N. Hmm. Okay, and last four digit of your social security number? Yeah, but we have a policy that we have, have to abide by, and I can't just change our policy. Yeah, but I mean, policies can always be changed, right? All right, thank you so much. And the business address? At the time of the warrant, was 186 First Avenue, New York, New York, 10001. But now that business is uh, located in Texas, so it's moved. What, what is that address? Uh, the, the new address? Mm -hmm. the, okay, so the new address. Have... Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I, I closed this business and I reopened the new one in Texas. So the, the, the address that this business is technically at right now is... I mean, technically, this business is closed, so I don't think it has an. I don't. I don't know what to tell you for an address. We do. I, we, we do have a New York address. It, the last known address was, one forty one West Twenty Seventh Street, New York, New York, mm -hmm. one zero 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 one. Oh. Yeah, that is the one, and it shows you have a balance of two thousand seven hundred seventeen and seventeen cents. Okay, you so I... For corporation tax 2012, we didn't have your tax returns. Okay, but so here, so I had two questions for you. Uh, the first question is, if I have my 2012 tax returns, along with certified mail uh, of uh, mailing receipts for me sending them in, uh -huh. can I submit those and have this removed? Because I filed and paid my taxes in 2012. I, I did file, and I actually... Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very OCD, so I actually have a binder that is filled with all of my, a copy of all my filings, along with a certified mail filing receipt. So I have two questions. Oh. First is, 
if mm-hmm. I spend, is there a place I can send that information to so that I can yes, have? that's what to, I am going to get the phone number. You have to talk to a different unit. One second, let me get that number for you, okay? Okay, thank you so much, by the way. I really appreciate you, you taking the time. Yeah, no problem. It says failure to file. We don't have your tax returns. If you have a copy of your tax return, then you can fax to them. One second, let me get that number for you, okay? Okay. And when did you close the business? That business was closed around January, actually. Oh, this it- year? Yeah, yeah. I, I moved away. Oh, okay. You are, you are in Texas now? Yep. Oh, okay. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. That number is... Okay. That number is 518. 518. 485. 485. Zero three eight four. Zero three eight four. Okay, so what I was, this is a fax. This is a fax number, correct? No, no, no. This is the fa- phone number. You have to call and talk to them. Then they will get uh, give you the fax number. We don't okay, have the so fax will, number. They will give me a. They, they'll give me a fax number and they'll help me sort it out. Yeah, yeah. You have to talk to them. If you have okay. the tax returns in hand, then you okay. better talk to them. Okay. And I have one last question for you, and I realize, I'm sorry, I'm sure this is an unfair question no, to be no, asked. No, 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 you don't uh, have to be sure. sorry. Okay. Sure. So uh, my mailing address for the time period of these, I, I, pretty, I opened every piece of mail that I received. So I'm usually, I get, I get a letter in the mail that will say, hey, you know, you, you, you should pay, like, pay this tax, or hey, we think you have this penalty, and I would respond to it. Yeah. I never received any notification of a lien I never was asked for any money because, like, if you look, fifteen hundred dollars is a very inconsequential amount of money for a business that has six to twelve employees. So, like, how yeah. does this kind of thing happen? Like, how does it get to the point of a lien? Because the, the thing that I just don't understand, like, I would have never even known I had this unless I just went to search to find a warrant, yeah, doc, which is just not. We were, we were, fi- uh, we were sending notices since fourteen, twenty fourteen. And you're yeah. saying you didn't get any? No. And uh, part, part of the OCD that I have is that I actually scan everything I get from the IRS in New York State, and I have three binders filled with every piece of mail I've gotten. And I've looked through it, and I have nothing from this time period related to yeah, 2012 you, you, corporate tax. They, they, they can help you out, too. They have to look through that. Then if you didn't get it. And the uh, address, when did you move to Texas? I when moved to Texas. have your... Yeah. yeah, I opened up a new business entirely. So I opened up a new company and I moved to Texas after my last audit was over. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I just don't want to deal with this type of stuff anymore. Like it's just. Yeah. But yeah, so like, 2012, did you file the returns? You said you filed it. Okay, we, yeah, you better talk to them. Maybe they can help you out. If you okay. have all the documents, if you didn't receive any letter notices, you better talk to them. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time, and I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Good luck, sir. Yeah. Thank you. This is the final boss, and this person actually figured out exactly what went on, exactly what mistake was made, and exactly how to fix it. And I tried to make it a point to make sure that they were, at least, if not rewarded, at the very least, appreciated for what it is they did. So this is the call that vindicates me because this, I'm, I'm telling you, that on the call that I had yesterday, I really thought. Maybe I didn't file my taxes. It wasn't until I got home and went through my binder that I realized I did. And even on this phone call, I thought, you know what? Maybe it was me. But it wasn't. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Corporation Tax Liability Resolutions. My name is Eno, employee ID 61376. How may I assist you today? Hi, I had a question about a warrant or a lien on a business for a corporation tax that was unpaid. Okay, um, what's your affiliation with the business that you're calling for this matter? I'm the owner. Okay, now I got a question. Have you already spoken to our collections department about this lien or warrant? I have not yet. I spoke. I don't. I, I called the, the number on the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance website about it, and they mm-hmm. suggested I call you. 
Okay, let's take a look and see why uh, and see how you got here. Because normally any collection activity like a lien or a warrant has to be discussed with them, but we can certainly take a look. Sure. Um, what's the taxpayer ID of the business, please? Four five four two seven six four nine five. Okay, thank you very much. The name of the business, please. Rossman Repair Group Inc. Thank you. The address of the business, please. Uh, 141 West 27th Street, New York, New York, 10001. Thank you. And what is the warrant or collection case ID? It should start with the letter E. E is an elephant, 0436262033, W as in Wisconsin, 001. Okay. So let me just confirm, E043726203-W001. Uh, it, was a, it wasn't a seven, it was a six. Six. Okay, so 043626203. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let me see one other thing here then. And lastly, let me see, I'm just loading the screen here. Sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, what is your name, sir? My name is Lewis Rossman. Okay. Um, can you go ahead and confirm your social security number for me, please? There were a few comments that I was reading in the last video saying that I'm a moron because I keep giving them my social security number rather than my corporate tax ID. It even Just to be clear, this is the corporate tax department, but they still want my social security number. That's to confirm that I'm actually one of the people that is allowed to get this information on the business and that I'm actually the director of the company. Thank you. On your best daytime telephone number, Mr. Ross. Nine. Okay. So, um... Looking in the account at a glance, this uh, collection case ID that you gave me doesn't doesn't match your account at all. And in fact, we're showing that you have no balance. Now, that doesn't mean that you're out of the woods yet. It might just mean there's something that we need to review in the account for in the account in our systems further. Would you mind if I place you in a brief hold? I'll take your time, by the way, and I really appreciate you looking into this. Uh, thank you very much. No, no problem at all. Just a moment, please. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Thank you so very much for holding. Okay, thank you for helping me out. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. So what I am seeing here is that you did start this corporation all the way, way back in 2012, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. So um, what I'm seeing here, was this officially by any chance regis officially registered as a corporation with the Department of State? Yes, anywhere? sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I think I know what happened here, and it's... Uh, Something that sometimes just happens because, you know, some paperwork's missing. So when you officially register the corporation, what would have happened is you would have been assigned a temporary ID, and we would have sent you a notice requesting that you provide us with your uh, official EIN number once you get it from the IRS. It would have been that maybe you never either re uh, responded back with your EIN number uh, with that notice timely, or that somehow just got lost and never processed. So what ended up happening is... Um, you went ahead and filed your initial year um, because you filed with the official EIN number and we had already a file created with your temporary number, essentially created two profiles. Now in the original profile, because you're registered, the system sees that you're required to file and essentially issued a bill for not filing that return. But when we see the profile that you did file originally on, all the returns are there. So it's not that you never filed, it's just something never got um, consolidated in our paperwork. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. That collection case ID that you have there right now, that should be canceled. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. You're going to get a notice indicating that that bill no longer exists. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to do before I get into anything else, um, you're the first person that I've spoken to in about 20 phone calls that's actually like really looked into my issue and figured out what was going on and wanted to help me. Is there any way that I can give you a positive review to your management, your superiors, or anything. Not because you saved me money, but just because you actually, you were knowledgeable, you looked into it, and you knew what you were talking about. And I have this just immense appreciation for people who do what you do, and I don't want it to go unnoticed, as it most probably does. Like, you probably have people screaming and complaining in your ear every single day, and when you actually do something good, people don't notice. I want to be one of the people who notices. Is there any way that I can do that? Yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, let me double check. Would you mind if I place you in a brief hole and see if one of my supervisors is available? 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, Mr. Rothman, uh, thank you so very much for holding. My direct supervisor, Ms. French, is available to take the call for you. Okay, thank you so much. All right, I'll be transferring you to him now. Hi, is this Ms. French? Uh, not yet, not yet. I'm oh, about to transfer okay. the call. Okay, no worries. Corporation Tax Liability, this is Pam, ID 60022. How can I help you? Hi, I just wanted to tell you the person I was just speaking to is the most helpful person I've ever spoken to in, in 10 years of running a business in New York City. And I know that most people calling these lines don't usually take the time to, you know, really praise people when they do an amazing job. I used, I, I, I do customer service and I have to take phone calls from angry people all the time. So I just wanted to make sure to show my appreciation. He was patient. He was knowledgeable. He figured out exactly what was going on when nobody else in any other number I was able to call had any idea what was going on. And I just wanted to make sure that he got noticed for it. And I wanted to say thank you because you clearly run an office where people are encouraged to figure out the solutions to problems and you obviously have high standards and it shows by the people that work for you. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. We we definitely appreciate listening to to, to co quality calls like that. So thank you. The, like the, if anybody at the Department of Consumer Affairs could figure out how to do what you guys think, <laughs> very appreciate it. Um, but, but, All right. So I, well, I was just talking. You. Yeah, I was just talking to him about a lien that has been on me for about six or seven years, and he said that I'm just paraphrasing that that was an error. And then I just said I, I wanted to first obviously compliment him. I'm finding that out and like, you know, doing all that like work for me. I really appreciate it. But uh, I just wanted to finalize that. Is there anything that I would have to do to finish? Like, is there anything that has to be done on my end to get rid of that lien? Because he said that was placed in error. So what we will do is um, the assessments will most likely adjust and close because of the error. And then when that happens, your lien gets taken off because there's no bill anymore. So um, I don't ha I don't know exactly what the case was about. I heard Sonny said something or uh, Eno said something about um, a two I possible two ID issue um, yeah. being the case. So yeah. So then, if as long as everything was um, filed, then you're then you're all set. And basically, the referral automatically goes to to CED, which is our collections unit. Okay. Um. I don't. I hate to be a customer, and I'm sorry for bothering you. Is there any way to have an idea of a timeline of how long that usually takes? Is the well, because it's going to automatically happen overnight tonight, like the assessment will adjust, the bill will adjust, then your warrant should automatically be vacated. You get a warrant uh, vacate notice that normally you'll usually get that in about two weeks. What also happens is anything that went out to like your county that you're in mm -hmm. um, that, that shows a, a tax warrant on your credit that gets reversed as well. Okay, beautiful. And, yeah, and my, so my last question, I promise I'll leave you alone. Uh, is there any way to get a letter that says that this is vacated? Or like you will get a letter. Yep. And, well, you and, will uh, get, yep. So you get it and the county gets it as well. Okay. And do you know what address that goes to? Let me. I just want to make sure I got the right one on file. I want to, you know, yep. dot my eyes across my T's here. Absolutely. I'm just going to bring your account up real quick. So the mailing address that we have on file is P.O. Box 842, uh, Berwick, Maine. Is that the correct address? No, I've never lived in Maine. I've actually I've been to Maine once in my life. What? Oh, I apologize. Uh, I, okay, actually, this is this could explain everything because one of the things I've been going over with the other reps is I never got any of the notices saying that I owed tax because like if I had gotten a notice saying hey you owe fifteen hundred dollars we're going to take you to court. Like I would have paid that immediately. That's less than one than like my manager one week of my employee salary. Um, so have all these notices been going to Maine this whole time? I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just curious. No, yeah, no. Let me take a look at that. Yes, I am looking. So I'm, I mean, I don't know if all of them, but I pulled up three so far, and they are all going out to that P.O. box. 
Okay, that ex- <laughs> yeah. Okay, that explains it. So I've I've been to Maine twice in my life, and I've for a day um, for vacation, and yeah, I, I don't have a business there or a home there. Okay, so is there a way to change that to a different address? Absolutely. Give me just one moment. Okay, go ahead and give me your correct address, please. Okay, the address is Rossman Repair Group. Uh, it's t- 2410 San Antonio Street, Austin, Texas, 78705. Okay, so I have Rothman Repair Group, 24-10 San Antonio Street, Austin, Texas, Yeah, this is seven seven five. 24 in the 10. Were you ever in a New York and New York address by any chance? I was, and I left last year. I'll be honest with you, if everybody okay. who ran New York City were just like you and your employees, I'd probably still be there. We're in Albany. <laughs> <laughs> I just make a joke with that all the time. Yeah, we're not in New York City. We're Albany. No, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I will go ahead and update your address so everything will come to you. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, that's it. And, again, you run an amazing office, and I hope that you're the people that call in appreciate when they get you and your employees. And thank you for doing what you do. I hope more people appreciate competence. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you right. very much. God bless you. And your yeah, you have a lovely day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. So that's that. And here's the funniest part of all of this. I do get some tax notices to my actual business address from New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. So it just so happened that some of my notifications about my taxes were going to the correct address, but some of those tax notices We're going to an P.O. box in Maine. See, if I was getting no mail from New York State and I owed money, eventually I'd probably call in and ask. But since I was actually getting mail from New York State Department of Taxation and Finance and Department of Consumer Affairs and everybody else, I figured, well, I'm getting mail from you on a regular basis. You have the right address for me. And since I was filing all of my tax returns and they were taking my money, I figured you were okay with it. Because again, I file a tax return the money comes out of my bank account, I get notices from you, we're good, right? No. Not only were they saying that they didn't ever got my tax returns because of clerical errors, but they were also sending out notices to an address in another state that at that point in time I had never been to. So the only way for me to have actually known about this this entire time would be for me to literally sit on the New York State Warrants website and search to see if there was a warrant out on me every single day. Because that's not an abusive relationship at all. Must just be Lewis complaining about New York for content, man. There's nothing wrong with this. This is exactly how you should treat businesses. This is exactly how a normal, functional city or state should run. These people put out a fucking warrant on me, and they can't even keep track of my address. Fuck me. It's over. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Um, Yes, I hope that I get my letter releasing my lien in the mail soon. Because, again, it's just, it's not a good look as a business to have a warrant or a lien out on you. As I said earlier in the video, it doesn't matter whether you're wrong or right. Just seeing it there, people look at you kind of funny. Oh, he's a bum. Oh, he doesn't pay his taxes. Oh, he thinks he can get away with it. No. I pay all of them, and I have proof. (sighs) Remember my last audit? Remember my last audit where they wanted over $40,000 per quarter for a period spanning many years, and after a year and a half, they got less than $6,000. Here, I have multiple liens on me for $1,500, Zero. You're not getting any more of my money, New York State. You come at the king, you best not miss. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. But above all, remember, if you are dealing with New York State, keep detailed copies of your records, my friends. Keep detailed copies of your records. Binders full of mail. 
binders full of certified mail receipts because you never know when 11 years later you may need them.